Good morning. Um, I'd like to start off then this course and talking a little bit about what we're going to be doing in Unit 1 here and some general thoughts on business ethics and really just sort of walk through the, the material that you'll be, be dealing with. Now, it seems like there's an awful lot in this first unit, but uh, it's really not that daunting and I hope you find it interesting. And so what I thought I'd really do is kind of walk you through the, uh, the, the, the week and uh, give you some opening thoughts, some things about the specifics of what we're going to do. And you'll find it all right here in the lecture notes uh, that are provided for you in the unit. They're right there. Uh, open them up, download them, print them. It'll help you walk through a lot of things. But basically we want to go over about six, six topics. And the, and the first one is really, you know, ethics and the changing environment of business. And clearly business has changed uh, quite a bit. And several of the driving factors there are, of course, technology, uh, political environment, uh, cultural environment, demographics uh, is huge, the changing nature of the workforce. This all provides us with a lot of challenges, but also a lot of resources. You know, one thing we look at in uh, just talking about ethics right now in the academic world, uh, there's so much information that comes flying through. How, how do we know uh, when somebody is literally cheating, uh, plagiarizing? Uh, that's an ethical issue. But yet, it's so easy to cut and paste something, and we do it all the time when we gather information. It's a common practice. Well, just because it's a common practice doesn't make it the right thing to do. Questions like that are going to come up. They come up in business all the time. Uh, there may be something we do quite frequently. Well, just because we do it all the time, is it right? Is it the ethical thing to do? Um, so there are many of these concepts that are out there, and uh, I'd like to just kind of keep that in mind as we go through some of the material here um, and, and try to make sure that you see things in, in the big picture. Okay, Don't get wrapped up in what you know and specifics of, of daily existence. It's a big picture issue, and you'll see it's one of the one things, one of the few things, excuse me, that is pervasive across all disciplines and all, all forms of business, and uh, and we cannot get away from it. Um, so we're going to look at some things. The other thing we want, I want you really to look at, is this whole concept of stakeholders. All right, uh, I'm sure you've heard that word before in other contexts, but. What is a stakeholder? Well, the definition I've always used of a stakeholder is anybody whose life, whose business, whose affairs are affected by your conduct of your business, your life, your affairs. If you are a, a business and uh, you have employees, for instance, well, clearly those employees are stakeholders in your business, but aren't to some degree, say, the families of those employees, uh, your stakeholders. That's the kind of thinking you need to do about there. And, uh, for instance, I had had a client uh, for many years who had a business of about uh, 75 employees. And yet when I met him early on, uh, he told me that he wasn't responsible for 75 people. He was really responsible for about 300. And I looked at him and said, what do you mean? He said, well, these people have families. Those families are, are reliant on these employees of mine for their income, for their financial security, I feel I have a responsible f responsibility towards those families too. So clearly this, this old client of mine got it. He understood the concept of stakeholder. And that's what the concept of stakeholder is all about. So uh, that's one thing we want to do. Um, we're going to talk about you know, business ethics. Does it matter? Why does it matter? Um, and one of the things I really want you to, to look at with, with that is uh, think of it as we go through the course that we're not really doing a course in, as I said in my introductory notes, it's, it's not about morals, it's not about uh, beliefs. Uh, it's really about decision making and decision making processes. And what I hope we will learn about in this class is how we make decisions, what factors enter into our decisions, what governs our decisions, and literally how do we do it can we repeat it? Are we consistent in our decisions? It's all about decision making. So if you look at this as a decision making course, I think you'll have slightly different perspective on it too. You know, uh, in 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 the material, if you look at it, we have a little some data from a survey. 
I'm uh, going to quote right here. Um, and there was a business ethics survey, uh, and the bad news was that only nine percent of companies were rated as having strong ethical values. Um, good news: there's a lot of uh, formal ethics compliance systems being put in. The bad news is people don't believe them or just or that. Well, we have to have them, so let, let's have a, a, an ethics policy. Uh, you know, if the ethics policy isn't believed and practiced and, and modeled and uh, shown to be the true values of the organization, um, it's just words on a piece of paper. And one of the things I think we, I, I certainly hope we will walk out of here with is an appreciation of the difference between value and values and how having strong values can increase value in business, value to the business itself, to your customers, to your uh, stakeholders of all varieties. So that's something we can do. Um, ethics crosses many lines. Uh, it's not just the major issues, it's little ones. It's how do we treat each other in the workplace? How do we act towards people? Do we behave in a manner in which that people want to work there? Uh, want to work with us, want to work for us, uh, want us to work for them. All these has to do with ethical issues and decision-making issues. So that's uh, another thing, and it's covered quite strongly. Uh, and frankly, uh, you know, it's a very practical thing here. Employees want to work for companies that have strong ethical policies. Why? Because you know what you're getting. And it's very comforting to work there. And frequently you'll see people, uh, you, you, have we all seen these lists of uh, the best places to work? Frequently you'll find that they're companies who have strong ethical values. So those are some examples of can good ethics be good business? It certainly can. Uh, so one of the things that we're going to talk about then is core values, beliefs, practices, ethics as a way of life within the company. Uh, I want to talk about some myths, too. Myths of business ethics. You know, the first one, it's a personal affair. It's an individual affair. It's not a public or debatable matter. Well, it certainly is, and it is very public. It's very debatable, and we will be doing so. Uh, ethics is a real issue for most businesses, and we have to treat it as such. Um, the idea that business and ethics don't mix, well, they certainly do. Uh, because a lot of people say, well, you know, if you're in the free market, then the market takes care of things. Mm? The free market responds to more things than just price and profit. Believe me, people make decisions at a much deeper level than that. Um, people can say that ethics is relative. And there is a concept that we'll probably touch on later called moral relativism. Ethical relativism, meaning, well, that's uh, well in this situation it's okay, and in that it's not. But, you know, it's not always that way, and we're going to touch on things early on where we're going to see that it's not always that way. Um, good business means good ethics? Hmm. Kind of the flip side of what I said earlier. Not necessarily. Uh, if you maintain a good corporate ethics policy, can you have good business? Sure. Can it hurt you sometimes? Yeah. It depends on what your values are. It definitely depends on what your values are. And, uh, oh, and uh, the last one in here, the information and uh, things like uh, information technology are amoral. They're there. They have no, no ethical grounding in what goes on there. Uh, to me, that's, uh, that's just a false concept. Uh, the computer, the Internet, everything, it's the modern, modern version of the book. And uh, it's not amoral. So we're going we're gonna to look at that as we go forward. Um, you know, one thing is, though, why do you have to use ethical reasoning in business? Uh, well, there, there's some gray areas in business, and, and I think we need to remember them. The first, uh, laws don't cover everything, do they? And, in fact, laws don't always match up to what, what's ethical. I've had many lawyers uh, remind me frequently, the law is not necessarily what's ethical. The law is not necessarily what's moral. The law is what's legal. It's what's permissible. And uh, yet many times we'll find that the law is nonspecific and it's kind of gray on a matter, and that's where ethical reasoning comes in. Um, also, the, the, another thing to remember is that free market mechanisms don't necessarily uh, inform owners and managers and executives as to how to, com how to uh, respond to complex issues. And, uh, and the market doesn 